I like going to confession. I really do. It's healing on an emotional as well as spiritual level. But to be honest, I haven't been in quite some time. Maybe it's just a little too intimate when there's a lot of priests that I just don't trust. But I know that I will eventually go back. And when I do, should I confess being gay? Part 1. I messed up. We get told we're sinful a lot. Whether we're in a queer relationship, or in something more casual but still sexual, or whether we're asexual or trans or non-binary, being something that the Catholic Church considers not normal is looked at as a big offense. So it's natural to think that it would be something that we should confess. The Catholic Church likes to distinguish between what a gay person is attracted to, in other words, what they want to do, and what they actually do. So let's use me as an example and see how that applies to whether or not I should go to confession. I'm attracted to men. I'm pretty sure, exclusively. I recognize that these things are a spectrum, but as far as my sexuality goes, I'm not very confused. So if I see a guy with, let's say, a gorgeous butt, and I register as attractive, should I start looking up confession times? Absolutely not. There is nothing wrong with being attracted to somebody's butt. But being gay isn't just about sex. That part's great, but that's not all there is. There's community and activism, and if you want it, partnership and marriage and kids even. Is it wrong to desire those things, to want those things? Absolutely not. Okay, so what about to act on it? That's the distinction that the church likes to make when it comes to us queers, that it's not a sin to be attracted to anything but that it is a sin to act on it. But what does it look like when I actually act on it? What actually happens? Well, with my husband, the first thing that I did is I flirted, which is just another way of saying that I tried to express my attraction. In other words, I tried to be honest about how I was feeling inside in the hopes that it would make him feel good and that he might feel the same way too. That he'd understand how I was feeling, recognize it, and maybe feel some of those same feelings too. Those feelings which we've already established are not sins to feel. And then I dated, which is another way of saying I spent time getting to know Jacob and spent time letting Jacob get to know me, being vulnerable and honest and learning his past and he learning my past and just being with each other in a way that is vulnerable and slowly builds over time a relationship. And the next thing I did is I fell in love, which meant creating a permanent space in my heart for this man that I was attracted to in every way possible and that I was learning to build a life with. And then I got married, which meant from here on out, we are doing this together. We are a family that he will always be the only one that can occupy that space in my heart till death do us part. So that's what it means to act on it. Did you spot the sin? Neither did I. Part two, I confess. When you start to see your own goodness, the beauty of your queer life, you start to see yourself how God sees you. Made in God's image and likeness, which means made to love and be loved, to continually express yourself authentically and continue to reveal to the world the 
inner depths of your heart, of your reality, of who you actually are. To the extent that you have anything to confess, let it be the truth. The truth of your attractions, of your identity, of your love. Acting on it is just confessing the truth of your queerness out in the world. Part 3. Penance. Every good confession ends with an expression of intent to make amends and to do better. So while you may not have anything to confess as far as sins go in regards to your queerness, what can you do to more authentically live your queerness, specifically in Catholic spaces? It's got to start inside you, starting to reconcile your queerness with the church and God and where you fit in in relation to the institution and God. And, and that's if you want to, because you may decide you don't want to be a Catholic anymore. You're a queer Catholic and I'm done with the Catholic side. And that's a legitimate response. I personally, I wanted to keep wrestling with my Catholicism. And so that reconciliation of trying to figure out my place in the church and with God, it began honestly with affirming Catholic friends and, and allies, people that I could go to and be honest about who I was in my queerness and who would just be truly supportive, who said, I don't, I don't care like how you fit into the Catholic equation. I just want you to be yourself and to be honest. They went beyond just like the simple platitudes that I often heard from a lot of Catholic folks who said like, well, this doesn't change anything when it clearly does. They wanted me to be holy myself and to be happy and to be at peace with myself first. That was their first priority. And the fact that those people were able to give me permission to be myself and they were still Catholic, it, some key switched inside of me that I was able to go, okay, maybe there is a space for me here. Maybe there is a way for me to keep pushing forward, to keep wrestling and to keep down this process of reconciliation. And so bit by bit, my own emotional hangups with the church, how I felt going to mass or how I felt just identifying in public as a Catholic, those emotional hangups started to kind of fall away. And I don't know if coming out and spending time with affirming Catholics will do that for you, but that's a piece of how I started to be able to move forward and to have some sense of my Catholicism is still a part of me. Fully Catholic and fully queer. That's me. And I'm okay with that. And honestly, that's how the Catholic Church starts to change. Not by confessing fake sins, but by confessing the truth. My name is Patrick Flores, and I'm one of the leaders of Vine and Fig, an affirming resource and community for queer Catholics. You can find out more at our website at vineandfig.co. You can support our work via Patreon on the link below in the description. And you can follow us on social media at Vine and Fig Co. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you like this video, because we have a lot more videos coming out soon. Thanks so much, y'all. Love y'all. See you soon.